Down an old, forgotten dirt road in northwest Ohio, there sits a decrepit shack, forgotten to time. Rarely will anyone pass in the middle of the day, and no one passes in the dead of night. It was built by a farmer in the 1800s who used it to dismember those unfortunate souls whom he murdered for trespassing on his property. By the time the police caught on and arrested him, it was thought his body count was at least 20, though some estimates place the total much higher. After his capture in 1858, the property fell into disrepair and the shack disappeared into the growth of the bordering forest. Over the years, the land would change hands many times, with each owner being unaware of the small building hidden beneath the overgrowth. The shack would be rediscovered in 1973 by a little girl who was playing in the woods as her father worked nearby. After clearing out the growth and replacing the rotten boards, the father would allow his three children to use the old building as a clubhouse. They spent weeks fixing up the shack, making it their own, and naming it for Goldie in honor of their family dog. As the summer faded into fall, the children would decorate for Goldie with ears of corn from their father's field and leaves that began falling from the trees. As the last leaves were falling and the first frost was inching closer, something would happen that would add another tragic chapter to the building's tale. It was late in the evening on a cool fall day in early November, and the children had not come home from their fort. They were supposed to be inside before dusk set in, but as the sky grew darker, they failed to show. As their father was putting his boots on to go looking for them, Goldie came running out of the darkness and into the light of the front porch. She was barking and covered in what looked like blood, begging the father to follow her. Forgetting to tie his left boot, the father grabbed his light and gun and chased the dog across the fields toward the fort. As they neared the small building, he could tell immediately that something terrible had happened. There was blood everywhere and the children were nowhere to be seen. He called their names as loud as he could, but there was no response. He searched all around the shack, but there was no sign of any activity or tracks that would indicate they had left the area. In the coming days, the father would be interrogated by police and the community would conclude that he had done something horrible. Before he could be put on trial, he was found dead in his cell. The official cause was listed as suicide, but everyone in the town knew the truth. Three decades would pass and the tragedy would turn into a legend, with local teens daring each other to visit the now abandoned property. On one of these nights, in early November of 1993, the infamous location would claim another victim. Jason, Kyle, and Katrina had been friends their whole lives. They were all born within months of each other and lived on the same street only a few houses apart. As they grew up, they became more and more inseparable, and as high school graduation grew close, they all applied to the same colleges and planned to pick the best one they were all accepted for. This plan would fall apart when the one college Kyle was accepted to rejected Jason and Katrina. Kyle was devastated and couldn't understand how his friends were not accepted or how he failed to get into any of the colleges they were accepted into. Knowing there was nothing he could do about it, he decided to make the most of his time with his friends over the final year together. They were only a couple of months into their senior year, and the group's favorite holiday, Halloween, was quickly approaching. As they started to plan out the next few months, Kyle would suggest a trip to the old abandoned farm as a spooky night out to celebrate their last All Hallows Eve together. Do you even know what you're asking? Jason said, raising his eyebrow and staring at his friend. Of course I do. The place is supposedly haunted and I've always wanted to check it out, Kyle replied. Dude, even if the old farmer doesn't exist, the place is still a death trap. Jason was trying to hide the fact that he was afraid of the old place, but his eyes betrayed him as he spoke. And what if we get caught? My mom would kill me if I went up there, Katrina added. We won't get caught. How many times have I done things for you guys that I didn't want to do? This is the one thing I really want to do before it's too late, Kyle replied, looking back and forth between them and giving them his saddest expression. After a little more debate, it was decided they would go to the farm that weekend, each telling their parents they were going to a movie. 
Jason and Katrina picked up Kyle on Saturday afternoon, and the three friends grabbed a burger before heading to the farm. They pulled into the long, gravel driveway as the sun was beginning to set and parked the car off to the side of the road. Grabbing flashlights, the group set off toward the house that now sat overgrown and forgotten. As they climbed the old stairs onto the porch, Katrina stopped in her tracks. Did, did you guys hear that barking? She asked. It was probably just the wind, Kyle responded. Entering the old house, the smell of rot filled their noses and each room they explored was more destroyed than the previous one. They weren't able to explore the second floor or the basement because the stairs no longer existed, and after only a few minutes, they emerged on the back porch somewhat disappointed. I was expecting something more spooky, Jason said. The house isn't the haunted place anyway. Everyone knows the really scary stuff happens at the old shack. Kyle said as he made his way down the steps and into the now oppressively dark yard. A thin layer of fog coated the grass as they shined their lights across the field. The tree line about a hundred yards away was just barely visible in the dim light and they decided that would be the best bet as a place to start looking. Stepping off the porch, they made their way through the night toward the forest. It would take quite a bit of searching and a good couple of hours before they would find what they were looking for. Katrina spotted the building before the boys, calling it out with her flashlight. It looked much more run down than they had anticipated. Even Kyle was hesitant to get closer than a few feet from the entrance. Tree limbs protruded from the walls and roof as if they were reaching for the teens. Their lights didn't seem to be able to penetrate the darkness past the doorway, and they were talking about leaving when a noise from inside caused them to freeze in place. The unmistakable sound of a little girl humming emanated from the darkness of the shack. The humming seemed to be coming closer and closer to the doorway before stopping abruptly and being replaced by the sound of metal scraping on concrete. Without a single word, all three friends turned and bolted back toward the house and the safety of their car. Sprinting faster than he ever thought he could, Jason was the first to arrive at the car, with Katrina not far behind. As they scanned the yard for Kyle, a scream broke through the cool night air. They knew right away that something was horribly wrong, but neither of them wanted to go back to the shack. Climbing in the car and starting the engine, Jason threw the vehicle in reverse and left as fast as he could, barely missing a tree at the end of the driveway. Speeding back into town, they drove to the police station, where they explained what had happened and begged for help. Police and paramedics went out to the farm and searched the area through the night and into the next day. Very few of them were able to enter the shack that became the primary crime scene without losing their lunch in the process. Kyle's body was never recovered, though the prosecutor claimed that was because it had been dismembered using the bloody saw in Jason's trunk. Before Jason or Katrina could stand trial, they were both found dead in their cells from apparent suicide. Don't be scared. I just want to play a game with you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.